Hey there, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do a, a quick, simple uh, exploration in some of the tools that MathCAD provides as far as formatting the different math expressions. Okay, so we're not talking about the text formatting or the layout of your uh, annotations, but rather the equations and the math components themselves. So the place where you're going to find, I have a, a sheet open here. It's just uh, a, a calculation sheet that I use to look at uh, stresses and beams. Uh, and I'm going to just going to use it as an example to show you some of the features that's here. So all of this math formatting, as you would probably expect, is up here in the math formatting uh, tab. So I'm just going to open that and you can see some of the things that you can do. Now, let's not worry about label styles. I'm going to do a separate video on labels because they're really quite important to us and uh, worthy of their own short excerpt. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at the um, values here uh, and here. So, so the one thing that you need to understand about formatting math expressions in MathCAD is that you have defaults and you have specific annotations to the specific expression uh, at a time. So it, normally when we're going through and creating our calculation sheet, we don't bother to make very specific annotations or requirements of individual expressions, which means that if we were to change the default, then that would affect everything. And so there's a number of things you can do. So obviously we can uh, change the font. Uh, I'm not, I, I like the font that it comes with, so I'm not gonna play with that. You can change the size, but let's say we wanna change the color. So we're, we're in the sheet somewhere, not, uh, nothing specific has been selected. And let's say we choose red. And you'll notice that all of the math fonts uh, are changed to red. Now, not the variables because the variables are set by their label style, uh, but all of the math expressions and results show up in red. I'm not a fan of that, but that's exactly what you can do. It is now the default by putting your cursor somewhere in the page and then changing it. And of course we can change it back again, put the cursor somewhere in the page and we can change it back to black and we can do that. Now, to differentiate between a specific uh, update to a specific expression, so for example, if we were to go into this expression here where y1 is equal to d1, 107 millimeters, I go in here. Now, if I change the color, it only applies to that expression. And you'll note that it also updates the, uh, the variables. So a little bit deals with it a little bit differently. Now let's watch. I'm going back outside the sheet and I'm going to change the color and this time I'm going to change the color to green. And you'll notice it does all of the updates to green for the various math expressions, but it doesn't override the specific definition for that one equation that we turn to red. So defaults will not override specific requirements and, and that's important to, uh, to understand. Anyway, let's get those back to black. Uh, and we're going to have to take care of the specific one as well. We'll change it back to black. And let's look at some of the other things we can do. Of course, we can choose highlighting or backgrounding, right? So again, if I were to choose a specific expression and decide I wanted to highlight it as yellow, then we can do that. Again, we can change the default as well. That would look really kind of strange. So click out, say, turn the default to green and you get all of that. Not, not a fan. I think they do a good job of the defaults. So let's get that back to none. Okay. Now, sometimes where I use things like this, where I have a yellow background is if in a fairly automated calculation sheet, I need to do some manual intervention for whatever reason, I was not able to build it into the algorithm. Quite often I will highlight it yellow, put a little note there saying, oh, manual intervention required. And it's not a bad way to, uh, to show that off so that the user of the sheet is aware of that limitation. Anyway, let's get rid of that. The, um, uh, other, you know, besides changing the font or the size of the font or anything else, the place where we use math formatting the most often probably is in the nature of the expression, the mathematical uh, number, uh, or its level of precision or the number of significant digits that it's uh, showing us. And, and so, again, if it's a default for the overall sheet, then... Uh, 
it's not going to override any specific one. So I tend to leave the default the way it is. I'm fairly happy with the choices Mathcat does, but then I do go and apply it sometimes where it just doesn't make sense for the nature of the data that's being presented. Uh, and an example here is Q sub E, I believe I've turned that into scientific expression. So the way I would do that, if it wasn't already done is, or scientific, actually I choose engineering. I, I because particularly because I work in SI units, I, I like engineering because it comes in, you know, times 10 to the third, times 10 to the sixth, times 10 to the ninth. Uh, so I choose engineering. And now again, if I click out and were to change, say everything to scientific, you'll notice it updates everything else, but it doesn't update that because I have it chosen as engineering. And so we can choose uh, general, which is the default. And this again remains engineering notation because that is what has been assigned to it very specifically. Now, the other thing you can do is change the number of significant digits. So like if I were to go up to something ridiculous like seven, again, it's changing the default because I don't have anything specifically uh, chosen. Probably looks a little bit ridiculous, but what it might be is that say on a particular number, uh, you, you're happy with the three digits, but you want that to be a single digit well, we can do that uh, by selecting it and applying it to the individual one. Um, now, as we go down, uh, we get into the um, complex numbers and how they're shown, whether uh, by components or by polar notation. I don't deal a lot with uh, complex numbers in my field, uh, so I'm not really going to get into it too much. I think it's fairly self-explanatory from what I've seen. So, and of course you can clear formatting, just brings everything back to the defaults. Uh, so if you start getting lost in what you're doing, it's not a bad thing to do. Again, we'll go over label styles uh, a little bit later on a separate video, but uh, hopefully that was enough to let you understand why sometimes uh, things look the way they look or how you can uh, take advantage of uh, the formatting tools within MathCAD for math formatting.